How's it going everyone, Brainchild here, and I've got a few quick pointers on rising through the ranks of this newfangled battle royale game aptly named Tetris 99. Now I don't know about you, but as an average Tetris player, I was kind of expecting my Tetris experience over the years to seamlessly transition over to Tetris 99 without a hitch. I initially didn't take 99's core gameplay loop to be that much different than the other Tetris games, but after a few rounds of playing, it became quite clear to me that Game mechanics wise, I was definitely missing something, and the game seemed intent on keeping that something from me considering that there's absolutely zero in-game explanations for how the game works at all. Nevertheless, with lots of experimentation and practice, I picked up on a few strategies that helped me to survive for a lot longer than I had been doing initially. Do keep in mind that the following strategies are based on general observations and experiments I conducted that seem to yield consistent, predictable results. These strategies are not official and may be based on incomplete data which is to be expected when analyzing a game with no official documentation about its gameplay mechanics. With that being said, let's get into it. Survival tip number one, go for easy KOs early in the game. If you haven't started already, you should start using the analog sticks to either select a targeting strategy that the game will carry out automatically or manually select your targets. Regardless of the method that you use, targeting opponents is absolutely vital for surviving for more than a few minutes in the higher ranked matches of Tetris 99. However, we're just going to focus on the pre-designated targeting strategies in the game due to the fast paced and nature of the Tetris gameplay and the fact that the entire game is built around taking advantage of these strategies and actively eliminating opponents. Since each match is likely to be competitive, you stand a better chance of surviving early on in the game if you can pick off opponents who are already on their way out, as cruel as that sounds. Simply switch your targeting strategy to KOs to focus your attacks on these players. As far as I can tell, similar to other modern Tetris games, the loss condition that needs to be satisfied in order for the game to register a KO in Tetris 99 is either for a player's garbage attack to push another player's Tetraminos outside of the board's matrix, or a player's newly spawned Tetramino to land itself or be time locked outside of the matrix. When the game meets these conditions, it's considered topping out, and that's when a KO is registered. Aside from easily securing a placement other than dead last, targeting easy KOs allows you to amass badges more quickly, which is quite useful since badges increase your attack power and puts you on more equal footing against more skilled players, especially those who are particularly adept at core Tetris gameplay but haven't yet mastered battle royale strategizing in Tetris 99. This strategy is less important for top level players who are confident that they can swiftly obliterate any opponent that they face, but even if that were the case, a top level Tetris player who hasn't collected any badges yet may find themselves losing to their lesser skilled opponents, especially if there are multiple decorated players of lesser skill attacking the top level player. So the easy KO strategy really is a universally advantageous strat for the early game. Do keep in mind, however, that the game cannot perfectly predict who will be KO'd every time, especially super early on. If you want to make sure you're not wasting your time targeting an opponent who isn't going to be KO'd anytime soon, you can reselect the KO's targeting strategy and the game will select another opponent it predicts will be KO'd. Alternatively, you can manually target an opponent who seems to be struggling in the game. Another thing to keep in mind is to avoid putting too much time and effort into setting up your board to clear a ton of lines during this phase of the game. The point of this strategy is to take advantage of the high probability of certain players being eliminated soon and to do it quickly, so you only really need to produce just enough garbage to send them over the edge. Survival tip number two, target your attackers if more than one of them targets you simultaneously. While you might have a specific target strategy in mind to take down your opponents, you can bet that your opponents have targeting strategies of their own. If you have too many targets on your back, you'll have to put your strategies on hold if you want to survive, since the garbage sent from your attackers is cumulative. And while it might seem a bit unfair that your attackers can gang up on you and stack their garbage against you, switching your targeting strategy to attackers definitely helps to even the odds. You see, you're awarded bonus lines of garbage depending on how many people are targeting you simultaneously. The more people that target you, the more bonus lines you'll receive for clearing their garbage. And even though your retaliating attacks are distributed evenly among your attackers, they're still far more powerful than your attacker's attacks against you. Especially since your badge bonus stacks on top of the bonus you get for using the attacker's targeting strategy when multiple people are targeting you. Suffice to say that it doesn't take long before most of your attackers will start to back off, and when that happens, you can resume your main objective. However, sometimes you'll notice that some attackers will not back off, and this is likely because they also have the targeting strategy set to attackers, like you do. Once you stop using the attacker's targeting strategy, you'll often find that those players will immediately stop targeting you. Overall, the strength of the attacker's targeting strategy lies in the numbers. The less people you have targeting you, the less advantageous the strategy is. Sometimes it can be better to simply ignore your attackers if they are low in number in the early game, as not all of them will be skilled enough to send a significant amount of garbage your way, and spending time fighting them takes away time you could be spending getting easy KOs. 
Although you may be inclined to stick with the attacker strategy because of how powerful it can be, you'll soon realize that maintaining a defensive position throughout the entire course of a match is not really a viable option most of the time, so try not to be overly reliant on this strategy. Survival tip number three, hunt down players with badges mid game to remove high level threats and become even more powerful. Now this is where things start to get really risky. In all likelihood, players with badges are more skilled than players without badges, so taking decorated players head on is effectively provoking higher skilled players to target you and possibly defeat you. Yet, if you manage to defeat them, you will reap the bountiful rewards that are their badges, making you much more powerful in the end. So the question you have to ask yourself is, is it a risk worth taking? Personally, I think it is. In battle royale type games, you're going to have to deal with high level threats at some point throughout every match if you plan on surviving until the end. It's not a matter of if you should attack them, but when. And determining when to attack is pretty easy when you realize that higher skill players are most vulnerable when they are being attacked by lots of powerful players, regardless of skill level, which only really happens during the mid game. When a match first starts, no one has any badges, so there isn't any power differential to offset any potential disparity between skill levels. Towards the end of the match, there are significantly less players remaining, so any highly skilled players remaining are more likely to overcome the odds of multiple powerful but less skilled players simultaneously attacking and defeating them. During the middle of the match, however, setting lots of powerful targets on the backs of highly skilled players can help ensure lesser skilled players do not have to contend with high level threats towards the end of the match, when the numbers will no longer be in their favor. So what the badges targeting strategy boils down to is attacking highly skilled players when you've become sufficiently powerful and there are lots of other people still in the game. If you can pull it off successfully, you might find yourself in the top 20 very often, even if you're not that great at the core Tetris gameplay. Good luck trying to pull this one off though. Seriously, you're gonna need it. Survival tip number four. Near the end, try to KO players who are close to topping out. Anyone who spent some time in the last stretch can tell you how alarming and panic inducing the music that accompanies the final phase of the battle is. When you combine this Flight of the Bumblebees remix and the falling speed of the Tetraminos and the incoming garbage from other players, the whole thing becomes a recipe for anxiety and it can be easy to feel like your primary goal should be to simply focus on not dying. However, if you really want to survive as long as possible, I would encourage you to resist that urge. You see, with increasing falling speed comes increased mistakes from everyone, which subsequently results in players being more likely to top out. You want to take advantage of this. There's a good chance that someone is struggling more than you are if you've made it this far, especially if you've already eliminated the higher skilled players from earlier in the match. So you should take this opportunity to switch your targeting strategy back to KOs to finish these players off and improve your final placement. If you ignore this strategy, it is possible that you will end up attacking someone more skilled than you and they may KO you sooner than the players who are at risk of eliminating themselves, resulting in you ending up with a worse placement than you would have had if you had used the KO's targeting strategy. Having said that, since the game's algorithm isn't the most predictive regarding which players are close to topping out, you have to keep a somewhat watchful eye on your target. There may be times where manually selecting a target is preferable, but that's incredibly difficult to do under circumstances that are so intense. Your mileage may vary with this one. And if all of this seems like too much for you to handle, there's one more survival tip that's sure to come in handy. Survival tip number five. When all else fails, spin, spin, spin. When your tetraminos reach the top of the matrix, you might think it's over for you, but don't give up. At least not yet. As long as only the playable tetramino exists outside of the matrix boundaries, you can repeatedly rotate the tetramino to stall for more time and figure out how to clear a way through. You can't do it indefinitely as it will eventually lock in place and end your game, but it may give you just enough time to save yourself. And even if you can't clear a path downward, if you're at the very end of the match with only you and one other player remaining, it's possible to get a victory royale by simply stalling until your opponent tops out. Something else to keep in mind in these kind of situations is that you don't need to focus on clearing too many lines in order to save yourself. Clearing one line at a time is often enough to delay incoming garbage from pushing you over the edge. The key to surviving in these situations is acting quickly, one line at a time. And there you have it, five practical tips you can use to survive in Tetris 99, and maybe even snag a victory royale. While there's a lot more to Tetris than targeting strategies once you enter the domain of high level play, like T-spinning and combos, following these survival tips will help you significantly outlast most of your opponents most of the time, so good luck. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like and share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Thanks for watching and be sure to stay tuned to Game Explain for more coverage on all things gaming. Cheers!